Welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may noticed that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to take a look at one of the, I guess, most recent videos from Mark Lowercase K over on Rumble uh, since he was kicked off of YouTube. And now he's over here uh, sharing the same ilk. And let's take a look at the title screen or thumbnail of his video. Notice something. All the large text is in different colors and it's in italics, meaning it's not on the page. And then if you look at the bottom, you have something that looks like correct sentence structure, but it's not because, as you may or may not know, well, if you watch this channel, you know that every correct sentence structure must start with a cause for the and the way to represent that with a colon would be to have a colon and then have your fact tied up against the colon, which is not the case in the bottom part there where it says colon space global hyphen chief hyphen federal hyphen postal hyphen court hyphen judge. It's of the global. So that's not correct because it doesn't start with a cause, has no reason to exist, therefore it's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, BS. And then we have ampersand colon space plenipotentiary hyphen judge and then space and then colon and then space mark hyphen lowercase k kishon colon space christopher period and then the website is blatantly not no attempt to to position website at all it's just hanging out there like a pronoun and then uh you see colon https in any case, it's adverb, verb. It, it, I would expect no less from Mark, Mark lowercase k, being that he has never shown any evidence of having closure on grammar or even how to use it. You just get stuff like that. He mostly writes stuff in brackets and, as you can see here, in italics. So this is a video titled Testimonies from colon mark hyphen lowercase k kishon colon christopher's university students at large so i guess his university students uh are located at a place called large or maybe his university students are large maybe they're giants i don't know i don't i don't get that but let's dig in and see what's uh, going on over here 29 people turned up. That was a big surprise, and it went on for many hours. I thought this meeting was going to be 11.30. Yeah, but such is life. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so... Well, thank you very much. 
So most of the faces, some I recognize as my university students and some I don't recognize. So there's, you know, there's like 60 people here. You know, I'm, I'm very touched. So somebody wants to go first. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, he does have quite a few people on this meeting, whatever it is, but you notice great lengths of silence are occurring, and I'd have to guess that as much experience as he may have with doing things like this, he doesn't appear to have a very good grasp of how to direct things or how to be a director of a room or be in charge of anything. And I can only, you know, correlate this with my own personal experience of when I do workshops or I do consultations or meetings, there is no dead space. Uh, I move things along. I direct things. I know how I want things to go because it's my vessel. I'm in command, and so there is no dead space or uncomfortable silences. Um, I find that if you just put a bunch of people in a room, nobody really will say anything until such point as maybe three people will start talking at once, and it's always better and more efficient if the host directs the communication. Like, say, for example, you could say... Um, David, why don't you go first? Blah, 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 blah. And that way you get people talking and you take the responsibility basically off of them of having to move, you know, come forward and volunteer. Because in situations like this, especially with people that aren't used to doing things like this, they're not, they're not going to want to volunteer. So if you want to conduct an efficient meeting and have um, effective communication, then the host would definitely uh, take the lead in that and, and direct as to how things would go. So it's beneficial for everyone. Just, just a note. Yeah, I'm uh, happy to go first, um, as we haven't met in person as such yet, if that's okay. Yeah, help us out. All right, uh, I'm uh, uh, John. I'm in the uh, UK. I'm in the, or England, should I say rather, in Essex, uh, in a place called Malden. We have some very special energy in these areas, and uh, I think you, well, I know that life doesn't, uh, nothing is by chance. Nothing happens by chance. We're here for a reason. But with regard to the the teachings, Mark, I think what has been really good is actually understanding the mechanics and the actual essence of what everything's about. It's all good and well saying, well, I know this, that, and the next thing to someone on paper, but actually understanding it, I think is really critical and important. And it is massively empowering as well to stop the abuse that is that is put upon us. So I think that pretty much sums it up. Well, thank you very much. I know more than it's the, it's only a train ride away from me. Well, we've, uh, your room's ready anytime you like. I'll show you some fantastic uh, energy lines over here it is quite incredible so uh, and they they they're revving up they're firing up now and um i think you know if you don't mind it's like to take the opportunity to say to everyone we are going on to a different level and we are really bonding with the the universe with uh, eternity esoteric call it what you will with source and this is a beautiful thing it's really really good being with all of you beautiful people here as well Okay, so I see who's talking now. His name is John Straub, it looks like, up there. Um, now, this video is titled Testimonies. So, when I hear the word testimonies, you know, when you think about a, a court, you know, you have a witness that gives a testimony. Testimony of what? Um, now, it's my guess, going into this video, that they're testimonies of success stories. People that have had success in stopping trespass uh, of you know bureaucratic interlopers something that Mark lowercase k advertises that he can teach you how to do 
So I'm expecting to hear success stories, specific su uh, success stories, because that's the, the title of the video. However, from listening to this John fellow speak, he didn't give any of that. Uh, he just testified to that he likes Mark's teaching, and that's it. Uh, he, oh, and he also testified that uh, he feels comfortable with the people he's with here. He's thankful for them, and he feels that he has a stronger bond with the universe, I guess. Uh, but no mention of a success or anything like that. So maybe this is a different type of testimony. Maybe it's a maybe Mark Lord Case K gathered all these people together to testify that um, they like his course. Maybe maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Let's look a little deeper. Yeah, well, thank you very much for that. Okay, so you know, can you tell me what you've done in terms Here we of go. Here we paperwork go. and what you've done? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, I've been at this for, for some time. Obviously, um, I, I really got sparked off like many other people when they set this pandemic attack on us in play and then started doing research. So I've always known since uh, I was very young that uh, something's up, it's not right and so forth. So I did a course with a, um, a certain crowd, uh, I think, operating from South America, which was really good. But it was, it's, uh, as I said, you know, it's really important to know what to do. So at the moment, I am in the throes. I've sent the, uh, my 11th letter off to a, uh, a tax, uh, well, what they, they, they uh, profess to be a tax collection. 11th letter? Oh, uh, wow. I don't, I don't know the method. Okay. That's, let me say that a different way. I know that... Mark Lower Case K does not teach correct sentence structure because he doesn't know it. He teaches a form of, I guess, common law using fiction against fiction to stop trespass. Um, I'm comparing this with the way that I do things with correct sentence structure where I create my own federal postal court using a document contract postal vessel court venue and one time I had a case go to four correspondences, four letters. But I have, mm, usually only have cases go to one letter, maybe two letters, but usually just one. This guy's on 11, and he ain't even done yet. He's still going on and on about it. I did a case with a tax entity back in 2018, 2017, and all it took was one letter using correct grammar. And it was settled. Again, Mark doesn't teach quantum grammar. Um, he teaches, I guess you could call it parse and quantum gobbledygook. But it's not correct sentence structure. It's not mathematically certified. So that may give you a little clue as to why this John guy is on his 11th letter with no end in sight. Uh, corporation in um, operating under the UK corporation. So, um, and that has been interesting because as I'm sure you know, they uh, ignore one. So uh, I've now I've recently sent a letter to the, well, they've all been to the top guy, but I've sent one in private. Um, and thanks for all of your input for that. And, uh, so the dogs will come, but uh, I've been very careful and uh, Mark, at some point pretty soon, I would uh, obviously like to get set up and, you know, sort of get some advice. I think everything's looking good so far um, and go from there. Yeah, so that's obviously HM Revenue as you know that I've gathered. If you want some advice from that guy, John, you better dig deep in your wallet. Dig real deep. Just a suggestion. Well, thank you very much for that. Who, who else? Mark doesn't want to touch that. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Hi. Remember what I said? Uh, Everybody will speak at once, you know, or several people will speak at once, unless the host directs where he wants the communication to go. Christine Viveretti, um, I'm in the United States. I'm in Georgia. Uh, I sent out the judicial notice, and I sent out... 
the global constitution. Um, anyway, my experience was with you is, um, I guess I've been kind of following your material for about a year now, maybe a little longer than that. And before that, I, um, I was uh, following David Wood Miller's information, anything I could find free online. And I've just come. She followed Colin David Ivan Wim Colin Miller a year ago. Uh, David passed in 2018. Uh, just putting that out there. Kind of watched it over and over again over the last few years. Um, I sent a message to my mortgage company recently um, asking them what is a mortgage and, um, you know, got an interesting response from them. Um, so I think I kind of shared that maybe last week a little bit. They um, gave me a letter, the three, the three letters, the same letter. It was a, just, a doc, um, just a generic letter telling me, well, you know, you don't need to contact us. We'll, we'll be in touch with you kind of a thing and we'll, we'll get back to you. But really, um, they haven't, it's been a couple of months and I haven't heard anything from them um, with that. But so she sent a letter to their, her mortgage company asking them what a mortgage is and they sent her back three letters saying that they'll get back with her and she hasn't heard from them in months. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, this Mark is using fiction against fiction, so I have no idea how he utilizes timelines or anything like, or if he even does utilize timelines. It doesn't sound like this individual utilized any type of timeline. Doesn't look sound like they put any type of term or condition on the correspondence. Now, as a caveat to anyone out there watching this that has any ideas in their heads about uh, trying to, shall we say, get out of a mortgage. Number one, be very careful. Know what it is you're doing before you do it. I highly recommend not going off, uh, not having closure on what it is you're doing, because these types of things, the fiction will not hesitate to put you to sanction you and to make your life difficult, shall we say. Uh, especially if you don't know what it is you're doing. Uh, think about what a mortgage is. I mean, why? That, that's like uh, maybe purchasing a car from a car dealership and then writing the car dealership a letter saying, what is a car? So this individual is, wants us to believe that they went to a mortgage company, signed, put their signature, signature on a document, and it made an agreement, a contract, for a mortgage, and she didn't know what a mortgage was? What kind of goofiness is that? It appears... Um, it's, d it's difficult to explain how I know that these things are kind of working, but it, it would appear that they honor the, the request. Like anytime I send a notification or I send, I send out something, it's, it appears that they respect it and that they're kind of leaving me alone. Okay. I don't know. She just said, it appears as though they honor her requests. Didn't she just say she sent them a letter? asking them what a mortgage is and that they sent her back three different letters that didn't answer her question so it doesn't sound like they're honoring the requests at all does it i don't know how else to really say that um they're not like coming down on me very hard or anything like that and then i'll get like emails that'll say oh your credit score went up and all this other kind of stuff so if your credit score goes up that means you're further in debt the more debt you have, the higher your credit score goes up. So that's not really a good thing as far as the debt market goes and things like that. So perhaps this individual doesn't understand the, the financial mechanics of this of economical or economical mechanics. Um, now, I don't know the situation if they're not paying a mortgage or if they are paying a mortgage. If they are paying a mortgage, then why would the mortgage company have any mortgage company have anything to do with them? If they're paying the mortgage, 
then they're, you know, complying with the contract. Now, it would be different if they weren't paying the mortgage and the mortgage company was leaving them alone, but that has not been specified. I kind of use like those little like litmus tests or things like that to kind of gauge um, kind of the response and that sort of thing. So, um, but I don't know if I'm really answering the question that is supposed to be well, asked. You know, you're sharing with us because this, this is a recording and it will be put on my website and released. As Wonderful. Well, you know, what you guys have been doing, because most of you are indirect students as opposed to my direct students, you know. Some of you are champions, uh, stopping child abuse and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that's what it's about. You've, uh, you know, you, you've explained yourself beautifully that they do actually stand in honor, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, go back over her testimony, what she just said, and tell me at what point... Is it clear that the mortgage company stood in honor with regards to her request asking what a mortgage is? Because I didn't hear anything anywhere that suggested that they gave her closure on that term. <laughs> Thank you very much, darling. Uh, anybody else? There's nearly 70 people here, so... <laughs> there are lots, he said there's that. nearly 70 people here. He's looking for people to volunteer to talk. Keep in mind what I said at the beginning. Uh, an efficient host would direct the conversation so that there's no dead time and that the, the conversation keeps going. Um, I, I can see one of the brothers there that was talking earlier. Um, I can't remember your name. You've got the OPPO A945G. That, sorry, I don't know you. But um, I'd just like to big ups to you too because like you, I'm also suggesting that everybody go in and listen to Mark's um, stuff that he's got to share because it's amazing. Um, the courts... For, for me, don't have jurisdiction. So I know that we've won that. So that was just my cordial, or just sharing stuff that Mark has pointed out to us, the tricks and traps that these bureaucrats use within their court system. And um, we've snookered them. We've snookered the judges, like six judges we had to deal with. And we snookered them just by firing different things at them. So they really didn't have anywhere to kind of move with us. They snookered them? What does that mean? Snooker. Leave in a difficult position. Thwart. Trick. Entice. Or trap. To deceive. Cheat. Oh. So this individual. So Mark Laura Case K is teaching people how to cheat and deceive others? And this individual snookered a foreign vessel in dry dock? They cheated and deceived them? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to sit here and say that the fiction court doesn't do that themselves, that the fiction court doesn't snooker people. What I am going to sit here and say is just because they do it doesn't make it okay for me to do it back to them. Because we're talking about the balance of the honor and the grace. Okay? Just because someone does low down, dirty, deceitful, horrible tricks doesn't make it okay for you to do it too. Unless that's the type of person you are. If you are someone who... It's your volition to cheat people, to snooker people. Well, then that's your choice. Okay? Me, I choose not to do that. I've found that I can be 100% successful using correct sentence structure, being totally above board with the balance of the honor and the grace. And with correct sentence structure, there is no, there is no place for snookering or tricking or deceiving or cheating anyone. 
And again, Mark lowercase k does not teach correct sentence structure, obviously. Otherwise, this individual wouldn't be using words like that. Um, it, so was it was great. great. It was great to cheat them. They failed to make contract with you, and therefore they had to give up. It wasn't yeah. possible anymore. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. It's beautiful <laughs> to deceive them, isn't it? Anybody else? What the heck? We'll do one more here. I will try. Yeah. Okay, it's uh, Martina and Roland from Canada. So we started with a live life claim and then at contact writing and CPAS. And at that time I was it was the first time that we got real solutions. So we were in a lot of groups and they all were talking about what's going wrong, but no one had real solutions to handle this. And as it was the first time we got the real sol solutions for Mac. And I was tricked and pushed into a court case. We decided to become students of Mac. And now I have my syntax qualification. We are working on the quantum grammar. We are I would like to see the syntax qualification. Because as I've shown multiple times in other videos, what Mark calls syntax is actually par se. It's not syntax at all. Syntax has to do with the parts of speech. Conjunction, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, position, lodial, fact, past tense, future tense. It has to do with modification in the adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, as well as the correctness of the 567, 2567, and zeros, incorrect sentence structure. Okay? So that's really... A curious claim. I would like to see that syntax qualification, uh, Roland. The dictionary club, and we are champions. We sent about 50 to 50 people an email with a judicial notice and 18 letters. We have first responses. <laughs> and in the meantime, I know how to handle the things coming along our way. So I can handle our court case my own. I turn everything to the around what, what they are coming with. And yeah, we nearly got no letters. I wonder what he means by turn everything around that they send. What does that mean? Does that mean same thing that that other lady was talking about? To snooker them? To spin a situation? To like gaslight someone? Is that... Uh, what they're talking about, because with correct sentence structure, ladies and gentlemen, which is not what this individual is talking about, obviously, uh, but with correct sentence structure, there is no snookering, there's no spinning. You're showing a situation for what it is. There's no turning anything around. It's straightforward, commandeering of a vessel, showing the modification, stopping the trespass, making sure that vessel of fictitious grammar does not harm anyone, you tow it. As a salvage, you commandeer it so it can safely go through the sea of space and correct it and go through all of those uh, mechanics, postal mechanics, flag mechanics, banking mechanics, and grammar mechanics uh, to safely go through those scenarios. That is not what this guy is talking about or what anyone else is talking about here, obviously listening to, to the way they're describing it. They don't want to, to write us any longer. So, <clears throat> um, and I have to say, the more I know, the more I learn, the more I know I know nothing. And this motivates me to do much more learning with Mark, to get the missing is he reading knowledge. That? And this knowledge comes he is. from the university. And additionally, he came prepared. Around or in, in the dictionary or wherever we are, we are very happy to meet the people from all over the world who join us on this journey. So I would say thank you to all of us, uh, to all of you, and thank you that you are working on this and you are on the same route. Thank you. For well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I've heard all I need to hear out of those 
testimonies. Uh, the last gentleman appears to have had some sort of success in using fiction against fiction, using Mark's methods of snookering and cheating and deceiving against the fiction. Um, although I am not a fan of deceiving and snookering, um, I'm happy that uh, whatever uh, discomfort or trespass was happening to Roland, that individual, I'm glad that it stopped for them and that they were successful in using those particular set of tactics to do that. Uh, just not my thing, that's all. So as you can see, this is... Uh, all right. The way that I phrased it before is that those type of tactics, snookering, deceiving, cheating, those types of things, those are fiction tactics, i.e. what Mark Lopez K teaches is fiction. It's the same thing that uh, the guy on the UR Law website teaches. It's fiction against fiction. If that's successful for you, more power to you. I'm a fan of what works. Again, not a fan of snookering, but I'm a fan of what works. Unless it involves snookering. Just want to make that clear. So, in any case, that's what's been going on. Uh, I didn't really see any proof of any successes there. Just sort of vague uh, insinuations that, well, I've sent out, you know, 50 letters to these people and all of a sudden they changed the street sign. I don't know anything about that. I've heard people mention that a street sign got changed and in uh, overseas over there and they attributed that to Mark Lowercase K. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I don't have any proof of that. Uh, I guess if uh, I knew or had knowledge that the city or township was going to uh, switch out a sign, a street sign, a street placard. If I had foreknowledge of that, if I was into snookering, I guess it would behoove me to make a production that I'm going to send the city a command letter saying that they need to uh, change that placard to a different street sign. And then all of a sudden they do it. Well, then I guess it appears that uh, they follow my command. I just outlined for you a, a scenario. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying that uh, I'm just giving you some possibilities. Uh, unlike what you heard in this video and testimonials and what these people in this video were involved in, if you want to learn quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, Contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. And uh, we'll see if this is what you want to do. If 2023 is the year for you to get closure on the grammar. You can also support the channel by clicking the join button at the bottom of your screen. Two tiers of membership. Second tier gets uh, exclusive content not available to the public. There's a playlist for that. And uh, well, this was fun and interesting. But I can only take it in really small doses. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.